fabulous uh, French printmaking paper. Really tough, beautiful stuff. This guy needs a little work done. I'm going to take you on a walk through my office here. Here's my office. Here's the tools of my trade. Uh, part of the tools of my trade. Some pens, pencil, pen, watercolor set, and of course, goes without saying, my sketchbook. Um, this is where everything starts for me. <clears throat> Almost everything. So, uh, what I have here is a little sketch uh, I've been building these little pieces that pack into a cigarette box for uh, a local cigarette art machine. And uh, this is a, an idea I had for a piece. And I built a couple of these. And it's a tabletop weather bag that packs into the cigarette box. So I'm going to take it out here and show you how this works. And it's just made from household stuff, sticks, pencils, uh, blocks of wood, paper, there you have it. You always know which way the wind is blowing inside your house. We're out. This was really fun to make. Um, I have boxes and boxes of stuff in my studio and I purposely don't over sort it so it's not too organized because I love the idea not, not being able to always do what I want to do or find what I, exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm forced to improvise which, which is um, with something else that's around me. So I'm happily surprised. My process for building things is pretty much to see it right here in my sketchbook. I just have bits of ideas and I will <clears throat> rework them configure them in all different ways. Uh, it's sort of a stream of consciousness of ideas in here. And then when I actually start to build, I have some, some components already worked out. But once again, as I explained earlier, the work pretty much grows organically. I've been doing this all my life. Um, my grandfather, I guess, could be my first inspiration for building things. Um, when I was very little, probably eight or nine, I used to go into my grandfather's workshop in the basement of his house. Uh, and he, he was an amazing guy. Could build anything, he did everything. Uh, do building projects in his basement together. We built bird houses, shoe boxes, tables, and um, it, uh, it stuck with me. I've been building stuff ever since. So, uh, what we have here is a, a little mechanical kinetic piece that I built, and most of this is new construction, although it doesn't look like it. I fabricate it. So, all the paper ephemera and this head here, and then I patina everything to match the old. So, this way, uh, like with the paper ephemera, I have a collection of original stuff that I just copy over and over again so I don't use up my source material. Um, and how this piece came about was, uh, God, for probably almost 20-ish years, I've been throwing parts of abandoned project sculptures, pieces of sculptures. This piece is really not about anything in particular, except I had this box of parts that I've been collecting um, from abandoned projects where I throw you know, parts into. And so I was looking at that box one day and I thought, I'm gonna build something using all the parts in the box. So that's what this piece is about. It wasn't, there was no direction to it except trying to use up the things in the box. And there were a number of things like this head I've been dragging around with um, for, you know, over 15 years. So these things grow organically. There's no plan. It's just sort of tack one thing to another, respond to that. Uh, and they just, they grow that way. Um, and I used to have this piece on an electric motor, but I'm, I'm, I'm tired of um, 
I was tired of the motors breaking. I'm, I'm not a I'm, I'm not a, an electrical person. So I, I've been switching all the pieces out to hand crank, which is never fails as long as you have a hand, it works. These paint sticks are like gold to me. I have a box of them that I've been using for years, and I got them from a from a um, from a from a woman's transition project where they built furniture, and it took me three years of hounding them to let me have their paint sticks. They saved them, but they didn't, they didn't know what they were gonna do with them. So after three years, they finally decided to give them to me. And I used them, I used them all over in this piece. And, uh, uh, the happy side effect of this piece was the, the sound effect, which was not planned at all, it just happened. Um, it squeaks, and it's got a great squeak. <laughs> And I can't take credit for that. So there it is. Oh, and I, you know, I love using just common household objects, uh, things that you just, also things that are cheap or free, like balloons, um, uh, popsicle sticks, you know, feathers, uh, basically other people's garbage. So. The way I draw is, I'm not one of those people that can put the mark right where it needs to go first try. So I'm from the school of make a lot of marks until I find the right one. So um, that's why I sit back and make some marks. I sit back, grab my guitar, I look, and most of the time I can see where the adjustments need to happen. Uh, this piece I'm working on now is really basically a, uh, it's a commission to read to, to redo a version of a drawing that's from the from this book here of mine. Uh, she wanted that the original, but I sold it, so I'm reproducing a version. School and Poe didn't take, but the pencil and he got along famously. Poe spent many hours drawing cartoons in class, but it was not on the Catholic school curriculum, and the nuns were not amused. So he learned to sneak his drawings out to pals at recess. Later on in high school, Poe wandered into the ceramics lab and basically stayed there for the next four years. After that, Poe's unconventional approach for furthering his education was to never enroll in any classes. He just crashed the ones he liked to do the assignments he chose. A timely bribe to the night janitors at three successive community colleges gave him 24-7 access to art studios. Poe didn't care about grades or degrees and never received them either. His focus was ceramics, but other materials started to creep in.